Okay, since these movies are still pretty fresh, this won't be a typical review clip for clip like I've done before. This is going to be more just a rant. And there will be spoilers throughout this entire video, so if you have not seen these movies, if you intend to see these movies and don't want it spoiled for you, click off, go watch something else. But let's get into this. This new trilogy has arrived to create a fourth timeline in the Halloween franchise. The only previous film recognized by this new timeline is the first Halloween film. So the rest are gone. The importance here is that there is now no family tie between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. On Halloween in 1978, she was just randomly targeted by a deranged killer who chose her at random. And this really brings us to the rant. I absolutely hate the removal of Laurie Strode being Michael Myers' sister. And I don't understand why literally every single commentator I've heard discuss this finds it to be a good choice. I've heard all the excuses too. Oh, Drew, John Carpenter just pulled the sibling thing out of his ass back in the day when he had writer's block. Okay, why does that matter when we're sitting on four decades of Halloween lore? Jason Voorhees would still be wearing a sack on his head with one eye hole in it if some stuntman on part three didn't complain about how he couldn't see shit. Then they tried a few things, and one of those things included a hockey mask, and they thought, well, this kind of works. So that was done on a whim too, right? But if you took the hockey mask off of Jason now, it would remove a huge classic element of the franchise. Hell, removing Jason's hockey mask is actually less consequential to that franchise than Laurie Strode not being Michael Myers' sister is to the Halloween franchise. Literally every other Halloween movie was predicated on that reality. It's what makes Michael different from a generic slasher. Michael hunting down his bloodline is what made his character unique to the whole genre. It's also what ties Michael to Lori and her children. We've spent decades watching him hunt his family members because of this. Jason hunts people around Crystal Lake. The Leprechaun hunts people who take his gold. Freddy hunts people in the Elm Street house or around the town of Springwood. Michael hunts members of his bloodline and whoever crosses his path in the process. So who gives a shit if John Carpenter wrote this on a whim? It is a crucial part of the lore that made Halloween unique for 40 goddamn years. The other objection I hear is that, well, Carpenter even hates Halloween too. He doesn't like the movie, and he doesn't like the writing he came up with about the sibling bit. Who cares? Stephen King hated Kubrick's portrayal of The Shining. And guess what? Stephen King is wrong. I don't even care if he wrote the story. I'm just kind of shocked that everyone else seems to be totally fine with this. When we're two movies into this trilogy, and it's given no reason for Michael and Laurie to have a conflict. In fact, the movie has tried so hard to force the conflict that Michael's new doctor in the 2018 movie had to incapacitate him and drag him to Laurie's house. Guys, this is just shitty writing. And then in Halloween Kills, Laurie spends the entire movie in a hospital bed. I seem to remember that being everyone's complaint about Halloween 2. Funny how it's apparently fine now. Laurie's character does absolutely nothing in Halloween Kills, except yell and talk to the people around her. She never even leaves the hospital. So no, I'm not a big fan of the new trilogy. Halloween 2018 was a huge disappointment to me, though I will say Halloween Kills is more likable than its predecessor for one reason. Halloween Kills definitely racks up the body count and does so in some really cool ways. Some of them are a bit silly, as Michael can now take on seven people at once. I know they call John Wick the Boogeyman too, but Michael is supposed to be a standalone opportunistic killer. He's supposed to lurk in the dark and lift you off the ground when he stabs you with his knife. Not do hand-to-hand -hand combat with multiple attackers who are all wielding weapons. But overall, the kills deliver a real sense of loss most of the time. That is cool. I do enjoy that they're not just meaningless. There's more of an underlying tone of the emotional weight of the loss of life. The whole town feels it, and has some sort of collective PTSD about their own people, their neighbors, their friends, being murdered by this guy. And speaking of the whole town, it has to be said, these are the most incompetent assholes imaginable. I mean, imagine forming a mob of pissed off Haddonfieldians to blatantly operate outside the law and murder someone, but you can't manage to do anything right except remember your chant. Evil dies tonight. Well, spoilers, motherfuckers, evil does not die in this movie. The scene in Halloween Kills where the mob is attacking Michael at the end, the mob is basically doing the action equivalent of a Bond villain monologue. Beating Michael with pipes and bats and shit, I felt like Seth Green and Austin Powers. Remember that scene? He's Dr. Evil's son, right? And he's watching Dr. Evil tell the guards to start the unnecessarily slow-moving dipping mechanism to kill Austin Powers. 
Seth is like, dude, I have a gun in my room. Give me a minute and I'll be back to blow their brains out. Dr. Evil's like, oh, well, no, that's just dumb. Seth Green is too rational for this mob. Yes, the one motherfucker with the gun shoots Michael like four times in the chest, and he falls to the ground and everyone beats the shit out of him with the tools at their disposal. In the end, by the magic of bullshit screenwriting, Michael ends up killing all of them, returns home, and murders Laurie Strode's daughter. This, I imagine, will be the reason that Laurie and Michael have a final conflict in Halloween Ends. And yes, I understand that Michael can't just die like that in the second part of a trilogy. But at some point, you start getting tired of seeing the dude only survive because the assholes around him are just too incompetent to kill him. If Michael survives on his own because he's picking people off in seclusion, I can totally buy that. But he's laying on the ground, beaten to shit, with his knife literally sticking between his own shoulder blades. There's no way he could have gotten in without the dozens of people around him seeing him grab it, and there's no way he could kill all of them without them putting him back on the ground with their weapons. I can suspend plenty of belief for these movies, but I just can't excuse unbelievable storytelling. And that scene was bullshit. On the issue of guns, maybe it's because I'm a Texan and everyone here has a shitload of firearms, but how does only one dude in the town outside of a 90-year-old sheriff have a gun. And as soon as Lonnie opens his tackle box and shows Tommy Doyle his two pistols, Tommy asks him if he has a permit. The dude, I literally laughed out loud in the theater. Dude, you are the ringleader of a mob. You're literally going around town rounding up people to commit vigilante justice. You're not going to have a chat with the boogeyman, Tommy. You're grabbing weapons and gathering people to murder him outside the reach of the law. And you want to see a fucking permit for a pistol? I was almost rooting for Michael by the end of the movie, man. Fuck these idiots. There is another moment where I did laugh out loud, too, and that was when Lonnie drives himself, his son, and Lori's granddaughter to the Myers house after tracking Michael there. And he has a moment where he knows this is idiotic. He says something like, What the hell am I doing? I've driven myself and my kid right to the bee slayer. It was obvious he just drove there to get murdered. So look, these aren't great movies, but this is what they're forced to resort to when they make Michael a generic slasher. Just some dude who creeps around and kills random people. I couldn't help but think that people who like this concept kind of got their wish back in 2002. Remember Halloween Resurrection? Remember that clusterfuck that everybody hates, and rightfully so? Well, Laurie dies in the first 15 minutes of that movie, and Michael just returns to his basement of his house, where he eats rats and sleeps on a shitty mattress. The only reason he attacks those people making the reality show in that movie is because they're in his house. Now sure, everyone does agree that that movie's dog shit, but once you've removed the bloodline element and you've erased all that lore, Michael is reduced to being just some dude in a mask who's murdering random people. And that's all you have left. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Survival on YouTube relies on beating the algorithm, so if you like the video, click the like button. If you like the overall content, be sure to subscribe. And if you really love what goes on on this channel and you want to help the production of new content, you can become a patron by clicking the link in the description. Three patron levels have been added, with each level having a few perks. Thanks a lot for all the help.